So today's episode is all about self-limiting beliefs and the things that we say to ourselves that hold us back. So I'm going to probably talk about where they come from, how that can impact on you and some of the things that you can do to help with your self-limiting beliefs to improve how you think about yourself and what you're saying to yourself. So let me just start with talking about what self-limiting beliefs are and how it links to your self-esteem. So self-limiting beliefs are beliefs that limit you, the self. So a belief is something that you believe to be true. So it's something that you absolutely think is real. Um, And usually when you've got low self-esteem, the beliefs that you hold about yourself are not positive and they are negative and they hold you back um and subconsciously they will be stopping you doing the things that you want to do because these will be things that you hold deep 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 down in your core and they are things that everything that you do in your life will be built on the beliefs that you've got about yourself they're also a self-fulfilling prophecy so if you're telling yourself i'm too shy to do this then you will believe that you are too shy to do said activity and then you'll not do it. And then you'll also think, see, I'm too shy, I can't do it. And it's like a feedback loop of constant reassuring yourself of the self-limiting beliefs. Like you'll prove yourself right with what you believe by the actions that you don't take to evidence that your beliefs are true, if that makes sense. So... They're an important area of self-esteem to kind of get your head around. And I'm just going to give a little quick recap of self-esteem because it comes usually from your childhood. Like I've worked with lots of people now on their self-esteem in groups, doing group coaching, um, which has been really fun um, on the meetup. If anyone wants to access that, I'll put the link in the notes for the for this podcast video, um, which is just a great open safe space online. And I've been coaching in groups and we've been doing activities together and sharing and reflecting on how, what it what what it's brought up for people and that's been online so that's been really good and um, and also one-to-one and the self-limiting beliefs are things that come up a lot for people and these are things that people literally just don't when I say to them that it doesn't have to be that way it's hard for people to actually believe in what I'm saying because you are you and you're telling yourself these thoughts and they're backed up with emotion which makes them believable and they're backed up with actions that you're not taking or things that go wrong and um, which also makes them believable so you've got all these years of evidence of the belief holding you back of this belief that I am not good enough or I am ugly or I am not worthy of people's time or, you know, I am not fun. Nobody is interested in me. I'm too stupid to go for a promotion. And these are all played over and over in your mind for years and years and years. And you've got years of evidence and years of emotion attached to it all. So no wonder you're not going to believe me when I come in and say, yeah, but you don't need to feel that way. It's just a belief. It can go because you believe it. So it's like, well, mm, I'm not sure what you're saying is true because I know how I feel and you don't know how I'm feeling right now. Um, so it is a, it is a struggle and it's a climb up a mountain to kind of shake off the old you it does take work um but it is doable you have to believe me that it is doable like well I was going to just talk about myself but um the the podcast the fact that I'm doing self-esteem coaching the fact that I'm doing a group workshops and leading them and the feedback that I get is amazing 
This is my new evidence to show myself. I am deserving of the life that I'm making for myself and I am worthy of people's time and I have got things to share that is helping people on their self-esteem journey. When I first started this off, I was like, no one's going to want to listen to me. No one. No one's going to want to listen to me. I am a nobody. I am stupid. I'm not worthy of people's time. I didn't tell anybody about the podcast. I didn't tell anybody about the coaching because I was ashamed and I was embarrassed. And I thought it wasn't really something that I was any good at. It was just this little thing. It wasn't really, it wasn't that good. Um, And it's only over time as I've kept on going and improving bit by bit and starting to work with people, getting testimonials and feedback from people, having little direct messages in my Instagram that I get from people and emails and stuff telling me that what I'm doing is just a beautiful thing and it's helping lots of people. That is then my evidence that actually, do you know what? I am good enough for this and I am capable of doing this and I am worthy of putting myself out there and going for the things that I believe fully 100% that I can do and now I've got the evidence so that's what you have to do if you have limiting self-beliefs you've got to change the evidence that you've got stored in your brain and the only way you're going to do that is by taking action the only way you're going to do that is by doing the things that you're telling yourself you can't do to prove yourself wrong and it's quite difficult for people to kind of come to terms with when I talk about the inner critic and the the limiting beliefs are being told to you by the inner critic because that's a part of your brain it's part of you like again you're telling yourself this this is you that's saying these things but what you need to understand and what we all need to understand is that there's a part of our brain called the limbic system which is the emotional part of the brain and it hasn't necessarily evolved as well as society has evolved so it's almost like a clash in society that we live in having this brain that is very rational paranoid emotional you know it's 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 um purpose is to keep you alive survive and reproduce it's a very animalistic purpose it's a very um basic part of the brain that just has got core drives like sex, food, things that are going to keep you alive. But it just is all a little bit confusing because when we, um, let's get me brew, when we add it to today's society where we're just surrounded by so much information and so many different people to compare ourselves to, um, the limbic part of the brain is in overdrive and it's on constant alert to try and keep you alive and it's on constant alert to keep you safe. It wants to keep you safe at all times and a big part of your self-esteem journey is getting to know this part of your brain, becoming self-aware of how you respond in situations, becoming self-aware of what your trigger points are that make you angry or that make you anxious or that give you any negative emotion. Um, and it's it's a, a big part is getting to know this part of your brain. And before you even start to manage it. So you get to know this part of your brain and then you start to manage it. But this part of your brain is where your limits and beliefs come from. So it's this safety part of your brain um, that just wants to keep you alive, that gives you limits and beliefs because it's scared of you putting yourself out of your comfort zone. And if you remember that your self-esteem comes from when you were a child, which I'll talk about in a sec, then um, the the limits and beliefs are given to you as a child so you believe them so strongly so for you to do anything against those puts you in an uncomfortable position and makes you feel uncomfortable and the survival part of your brain doesn't like that so we'll constantly tell you these limits and beliefs because it's like we are not doing that like there is no way I'm standing on a stage and giving a presentation no way whatsoever because I I'm too stupid and no one wants to hear what I've got to say. 
therefore you don't do it, therefore you feel safe, and therefore you're not putting yourself out of your comfort zone, you don't get the anxiety feelings, you don't get the growth feelings, and you're just safe and you're happy and you stay where you are. And that is good to an extent, you know, but humans are designed to grow. And the reason I believe that one of the reasons we're in a self-esteem crisis Well, there's quite a few reasons, actually. If you go back and listen to my Stolen Focus episode, um, which I link about a book review on why we've lost our focus and how this links to our self-esteem, that goes into this in way more detail. But there's quite a few reasons why I believe that we have lost ourselves. We have, we want to feel safe and why we don't grow is because we no longer have a, sense of community in real life everything's done online and therefore adapting to that life is difficult it's not natural for humans not to have human connection and that's impacting on a lot of people I also believe we're in an absolute compare and despair um vacuum where we spend our lives comparing ourselves to everybody online and following people that are in the 0.1% of society and thinking that we should, could, and want to be like them and then sacrifice things in our life like ourself to be like that and posting things about ourselves online and just wanting to be loved. You know, we all just want to be loved. You see it everywhere. People putting selfies on, people putting, you know, everything online is all because, and I'm not, I'm not, um, um, I'm not thingy to this. I'm not immune to this myself. You know, we're all the same. We just want likes, people to love us, tell us that we're worthy. Um, and that's not how you build your self-esteem. That's the fake way. That's the short-term gratification way. We live in a world of short-term gratification where we are wanting everything now, today, you know, we, we want something delivered in five minutes. We don't even get off our arse and go and pick it up anymore because we can get it delivered. Everything is the Amazon culture of today. So again, this long-term gratification is like not, it, we're losing it in our brain and wanting everything now is putting us in a self-esteem crisis because we're buying the things that are just going to make us feel better in the moment because doing the work long term is painful and the thing because we're in such a self-esteem crisis and because people don't necessarily know how to manage their inner critic get to know their inner critic and work with their inner critic and tame it um it's wreaking havoc in your brain and it is leading your life it's making you buy things that you don't want to, that are going to make you feel good in the moment, but are not going to make you feel better long term. So as I say, we're designed to grow. We're designed to evolve. That is how we as a species are here today with all the technology advancements and everything that we've got around us is because we've evolved, because people have put the effort in to invent things and put things out there and all the different like policies that have been invented and the equal equality and diversity agenda that's all changed over the years is because we have evolved and because people have put themselves out there. So that's what we're designed to do. We're not designed to stay still. So yes, you might, your brain might say, I don't want to do that presentation. So I'm going to, I'm not going to take that opportunity and I'm going to stay where I am short term yeah you might feel better because you've not had all those uncomfortable feelings that you get from it but long term you will feel shitty because you are you are staying still and that will be a suppression of your inner desires and what you truly want as an individual and what you are truly deserving as of as a human being whether that be you know running up Snowden or creating your own business traveling the world, having, um, a, you know, moving up your career ladder in work or being a speaker or being an author or just being creative. Like we're all creative, really. We all have creative outlets, really. We just, some of us don't know what they are yet and that's okay. Um, because that's something that you can figure out. But um, the limiting beliefs are stopping you from doing that. And if you don't 
do those things that you truly desire, you're basically suppressing it. And that will come out in other ways. Like it will come out in stress. It will come out in anger. It will come out in negative emotions, the way you feel towards your family, the way you feel towards yourself. You might then self-sabotage. You might then eat lots of crappy food. You might smoke, you might drink, you might spend loads of money and get yourself in debt because you're trying to fill something that you're not going to fill with short-term gratification. Um, But because you've got a strong inner critic and you've got really, really strong self-limiting beliefs. Hopefully by now you're starting to see the gravity of this topic with your self-esteem it's so big like it's so important to start your self-esteem journey if you're feeling shitty about yourself if you don't feel good you know and you feel really jealous all of the time and quite a judgy person then are you living the life that you want to live it are there other things that you want to do do you need to like have a chat with someone about what those things might be you know do you need a coach? Do you need a self-esteem coach like me um, to go through? What are, like, dive in. What are your desires? What do you want in your life? Because you can do it. You can do it. And what I do with coaching is I help people realize what they want and help them realize that they can do it. I don't give them a magic wand. I don't give them a magic pill and say, there you go. It's like a it's a backwards and forwards conversation using my skills to be able to pull out of them to say right okay so what about this how does this sound you're saying this I'm going to reflect it back to you and ask you this question you know it's powerful powerful stuff and to think that I never used to believe myself now and I'm sat on a podcast saying how amazing it is even that is like amazing it's huge because I believe in myself like I believe in my self-esteem coaching I know it works it's amazing for people it changes people's lives and I am so happy that I didn't give up and I'm helping people to be the person that they deserve to be I'm so bloody passionate about it as you know and I just love seeing people's transformations and being able to see people think wow like I am released from all of the heavy baggage in the brain that you hold in when you've got low self-esteem and the heavy emotion that you carry around that's not good for you because it's negative and it's putting you down and it's not making you happy releasing it all like imagine how much lighter you would feel without these self-limiting beliefs with happy self-esteem it's just incredible and I honestly think most issues in life all come back to your self-esteem and you know it's such a big topic and it all comes back to your self-esteem anything that you want to do in your life is built on how you think about yourself and if you don't feel value yourself as an individual then you won't put yourself out there as well as what you deserve to do. If you think about it, anyone that you aspire to be or are inspired by or look at, they are born the same way as you. They are a human. They've just done things a little bit differently. There's no reason why you can't do that. whatever you want to do. Like, what is the reason that you can't do it other than the things that you're telling yourself? You can't do it because you're not clever enough or you can't do it because you haven't got the time or you can't do it because you're stupid or you're not good looking enough or whatever it is. That's just, that is just rubbish that you have been told. They're not your stories, they're other people's stories, they're society's stories that you've internalized. That's what self-limiting belief is. I need to put that on 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 a thread because Let's now talk about self-limiting beliefs. I love how I just, I actually, you need to let me know if you prefer me freestyling. I find it really boring doing a structure and sticking to a structure because all my creative thought and all my knowledge doesn't come out if I stick to a structure. I'm not made for a structure. I'm not a structure. I'm a free-flowing flower. (laughs) So that's how I need to talk. And I'm hoping this will land with some people and I'm hoping, you know, it lands with some and you enjoy the 
the, the journey that I'm taking you on because it's a little journey in my mind where I'm going with everything and hopefully it works. Uh, let me just have some of my three ginger pocket tea. Oh yeah. Beautiful. So self-limiting beliefs, right? So where do they come from? Your childhood. Just like your self-esteem. So before you were 11, you're like a sponge and you're very susceptible to everything that's going on around you. You don't have the knowledge or emotional intelligence to know that what people, you don't have to believe everything that you're told. You don't have to believe opinions that are given to you. You don't have to believe situations that arise. You don't have to take that on board as if it's your fault. But when you, before the age of 11, you're a child and you don't know that. So you do believe everything. You trust in the people around you. You believe the adults around you. You believe everything that you read and say. You're very, very influ- easily influenced. And this is where your low self-esteem will have developed nine times out of ten. Like, not everybody's low self-esteem develops from the childhood. Sometimes it might come from going through the menopause. It might come from, you know, getting older. Like, there are different uh, different things in your life that can trigger that. But a lot of the people that I work with and a lot of the work that I've done and um, studies is is around that age, uh, which sits well with people in this will make is relevant to most of us. So when you're, so the stories, like things might have happened to you. You might have felt some neglect. You might have been exposed to abuse or, you know, some some form of trauma that might not necessarily be big trauma like you're a child trauma is trauma you know trauma for a child is not the same as trauma for an adult because you're a child and you haven't got that life experience which is what I've just said about disagreeing with what's happening to you because you're not mature enough so trauma is massive as a child and it can be something small but it's not for a child so if something will happen to you and you'll develop statements about yourself like I am not good enough or I'm not worthy um And that is your then, what you then believe about yourself for the rest of your life. Now, it might be some of your limiting beliefs. They might be things that you were told about as a child, or it might be things that you had to do as a child that you've formed a belief about. So for example, you might have been, so one of your self-limiting beliefs might be around money, because remember, Self-limiting beliefs might be around absolutely everything, like I am unworthy, or they might be around a specific topic in your life, like money. So you might think money doesn't grow on trees. That could have been a thing that you were told when you were little, or I'm not made of money, or, you know, what do you think this is? Like, they're the sort of things that the majority of us will have been told when we were little, you know what I'm talking about. And um, there are things that you then internalize. So when you're then, that sort of sits in your brain and stays in your brain, even though you don't realize it, it just does. That's not your story. That's someone else's story that they've told you time and time again. And repetitiveness sticks in your brain. So that will have stuck in your brain. And then you might then be trying to build a business in your later life when you're an adult, but you're not, really putting yourself out there because underneath so you so this might come out in the way of you might not be putting yourself out there what do I mean by that you might not be say for example with my coaching so for example in my coaching I might not be actively telling people that myself is team coach I might not be advertising myself I might not really invite people on the podcast that I want to invite that are big big wigs because I'm like I'm just a little small town person who's not really at that same like level. Um, and these are actions that I'm not taking. And the reason what sits underneath those actions, like if you think about your um, actions as like the top layer of the table, the legs of the table that hold your actions up 
are your beliefs. So one of my beliefs might have been, I'm not deserving of money. Therefore, my actions are that I'm not really going to put myself out there too much, or I'm going to do a lot of the work that I do for free, or I'm going to only charge £5 for a coaching session or something like that, because my self-limiting belief is that I'm not deserving of money. And that came from when I was younger, I used to be told money doesn't grow on trees. Um, And what was the other one that I said? I'm not made of money and all of those things. Like they're things that actually are forming that belief. So, so just summarizing. So, you know, it can be things that have happened to you, which could be like your, it could be neglect, abuse, trauma, and you've then created a statement about yourself, a core statement, I am unworthy, I'm unlovable. And you then go out into the world and just basically try to survive with this view. And that, what that looks like is you'll hold yourself back. And then surrounding, if you imagine the center, your core, low self-esteem, and then surrounding that will be your beliefs that you've got around yourself that will have formed that that's that core statement of I'm unworthy like I'm not deserving of money I um I don't need I don't I shouldn't be heard or things like that like they're your they're your little um limiting beliefs that are holding you back so hopefully it's making sense it is quite complex but I try to break it down as eat like as simple as possible just to make it relatable because I don't really want to come on here and be all la da 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 with all these complex things and theories and stuff like that because I want people to be able to understand it so I try to explain it in a really easy like in a really simple structured way so that it's understandable because a big part of it is awareness like I said earlier but awareness of like these things like educating yourself on how the brain works pardon me how the brain works and what um like what's going on for you and where these things come from so okay so how do you then get rid of your self-limiting beliefs like at the start i spoke about the structure so not the structure the um taking action and action is the answer action is the answer um action around yourself is action in a few areas actually you want to take action in your self-esteem because you want to learn who you are and you want to build your self-esteem that's important to do and as part of that you want to take action in doing the things that you really want to do but you hold yourself back because you've got self-limiting beliefs and you also want to take action by figuring out what your self-limiting beliefs are I did a self-limiting belief workshop on the coaching group on Meetup and the uh, notes are in the bo- are in the podcast notes for this. If you want to join, I put them on all the time and it was, it went so well. It was such a good activity and it was all about like um, going back, not necessarily going back into childhood, but thinking about your ideal self and then like a it went through in like stages of how you actually get your limiting beliefs out. What are your limiting beliefs? And I probably haven't got time to go through it now, but um, so that's a workshop that's available. If you want to get involved in that, just message me um, or join the meetup group and just pop it in the chat and I'll just put another one on. It's all free. The, the meetup group is free um, for people to get in touch, get involved with. Uh, but it went really well and people were able to find out like what the limiting beliefs are. So I definitely recommend doing some coaching to find out what yours are, be that in a group or be that with a what on a one-to-one basis. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any books to try and help guide you to find out what your limiting beliefs are. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, Tony Robbins is quite a good guy um, to, to read about when it comes to beliefs. He's, he kind of taught me like the table analogy that I mentioned before that was from his book I think it's called the power within that's quite a good book um but yeah I guess the the, but once you know what your limiting beliefs are and once you start committing to building your self-esteem up is taking action and I guess that's why maybe you do sometimes you might need help because taking action is is 
best way to get over it of your limiting beliefs. So like my new belief is that I'm deserving of money. I'm deserving of money because I've worked for years and trained and done qualifications to get to this point. And I've done lots of free stuff. And I have worked with so many people now that I, what I'm charging is all of that time and effort that I've put in, in my spare time to build up to be the coach that I am today. So my new um, belief is that I'm deserving of money. So I don't really, um, what's the word? Like barter with prices and stuff because I know, I know my worth. Like what, what a great place to be in which is totally doable for anybody listening to this podcast episode as well for you and if yours isn't um and that you know that's that new belief has come from all the little baby steps and all of the evidence and it's not all smooth sailing like don't get me wrong you know it's not easy at times to put yourself out there and that's the growth like I was literally saying to a client yesterday when you do, when you're going to do this, because we were talking about something she was going to do. And I was saying to her, when you're going to do this, once you've done it, you're going to feel like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like your brain's going to be going mental. It's going to be analyzing what you've done. You're going to be feeling anxious. You're going to have all these uncomfortable feelings. Sit in it because that's your growth. When you feel uncomfortable, that is you growing. That is what growth feels like even though that's what the critic doesn't want you to feel because it wants to keep you safe. But actually it's like, it's like a bit of, it's a bit ironic because that's what you need to do to grow. And that's what you need to do to grow out of your inner critic as well is to sit in that uncomfortableness and do the things that you don't want to do. You just got to do it. You know, me putting the first ever podcast out on this, I put it out and I was like, Oh my God what if no one listens to it and I just sat there for ages thinking what have I done shall I take it down oh my gosh I'll take it down I don't know no put it on social media okay celebrate it and then you know today here we are in the top 15 percent globally you know it's like and I do a podcast now when I finish and I'm like sounds what's next you know it's not like a I love doing it I enjoy doing it but I don't have that growth anymore because I've grown into being a podcaster and but it, it is that growth. So hopefully this is like evidence for you that it's doable and, you know, just little baby steps. Don't take big, massive. What you shouldn't do, what not to do is go from A to Z. Try and run before you can walk because you need to be mindful of how you're feeling about yourself and you need to, you know, if you think, Say I said, I'm not deserving of money. And I then put, I've done nothing. I've done no study. I've done no reading. I've done no research. And I put a course, build a website, put a course on there and charge £1,500. Get on my course. It's £1,500. And then I get no clients and no one joins that. Or people join it and they are, they think it's crap then I'm going to, I'm not then going to believe that I'm it and they all want a refund. I'm then not going to, that's not going to support my new view of that I'm deserving of money because it's not backed up with evidence. In fact, there's evidence to back up the fact that I'm not. And that's probably because I've ripped people off because I'm asking for money that I don't, don't actually ethically have a right to ask for. So it's like baby steps. And honestly, do you know what I would say actually thinking about it now, which I've not thought of before You know when the time is right. Like, you know when, once you're doing the work and once you're building up your self-esteem and working on yourself, you just sense that you believe, the new belief just comes to you and you just sense that actually, yeah, you know, I'm a self-esteem coach. I used to say, I'm a self-esteem coach, I'm a self-esteem coach. Like, you know, but my actions wouldn't support that belief. I didn't believe it. And I was ashamed and embarrassed, like I said, so I didn't tell anybody about it. And I just didn't believe that that new identity that I had. Whereas now I'm like, I'm a self-esteem coach and I'm bloody good and I help people and I've got the evidence. So I know I'm talking about myself a lot, but it's like 
my story hopefully is like helping you this is like real life it's not textbook shit it's like real life I'm um, the evidence of this like this is how I help people because it and it and it it, it is the baby step so just going back to what I said like you don't go from A to Z you go from A to B to C to D and it is just the baby steps so if you want to get on a stage and speak to thousands of people you're not going to go from I'm stupid people don't want to listen to what I'm going to say to standing on a stage with thousands of people talking because your body will be, your inner critic and your core self will be so shook up that you'll be sweating, won't be able to speak, have dry mouth, feel really uncomfortable. It will be a disaster. So you've got to be compassionate with yourself. Like compassion is a huge thing and build it up bit by bit so that it might be that you do a podcast. It might be that you do, um, I don't know, like local groups. It could be that you build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up. So then you get invited to do a speaking event and then you get invited to another speaking event. And then you get invited to go on a stage. So by the time you actually get there, you're like, yeah, I, I'm I'm good with this. This is feel I'm nervous, don't get me wrong, because it's new and it is a step up. It's always a step up and I am nervous, but I've done all these baby steps before. They've all gone well and I've slowly built my confidence up in this and I don't necessarily have that belief about myself anymore because I've got the evidence to show that it's not true. So, yeah. So it is baby steps and be compassionate with yourself. Like nothing goes swimmingly, nothing goes right. Like, you know, there's things that I've done that did not work. Like I remember, and some people that have followed me on Instagram and listened to the podcast since day dot, thank you and love you. Um, I created quotes that I paid, printed off, had them delivered to my house to sell. Not one sold or did one sell. And that was me, Bessie. <laughs> Love you, Bessie. <laughs> like, no one bought them because I just didn't do anything leading up to that. I didn't have an audience. I was just like doing a quote and selling them. And then I was like, oh, that didn't work. Like, you know, but I didn't give up and I moved on and I took them, out, took, took them down off your website and I carried on and I've, and I've you know, f- done a lot of work since then and now I believe in myself so much that now I've got stuff on the website and I'm like yeah that's sick that's good that, that's a good poster that you can buy and that's a good you know self-care journal and stuff and it's class um but there are like little fails as well but don't let it put you off because it's normal nothing straightforward nothing is perfect and like you say you're pushing yourself you're creating new beliefs and you're pushing yourself out of your where you are so your growth is uncomfortable and it's all, everyone's journey is completely different. So because it's completely different, it's like, you're not, you can't, you've just got to keep going and keep taking the baby steps, keep doing a little bit of reflection, do some, do some reflective work on, you know, where you're up to, what your goals are, what your belief is and how you're going to get to you. Like, what are some of the baby steps that you can do? Where does it come from? It's just so important to kind of like do this work. And, you know, I see so much people don't go for the job that they want. A lot of the place where a lot of people hold themselves back is in the career. But then when you get into it, it's also like their creativity because people are scared to go out alone and do things that they aren't being told to do by an employer. It's just something that they really, really want to do. But that's the stuff that you shouldn't suppress. That's the shit that you've got to do. That's the shit that you need to prioritize because that's where you're going to grow. And that's where you're going to come into your own because that's where you're going to flourish and just be the purest soul that you deserve to be because you're doing what you want to do and what your inner soul is telling you. Your little inner voice, you know, your little inner guide, your gut, your instinct, whatever you want to call it, is saying to you, I want to do this. I think I'm going to be good at this. I want to do this. I think you've got this whole bloody ball and chain of self-limiting beliefs that's going, no way, I am too stupid for that. So once you get rid of your self-limiting beliefs, chip that ball and chain off, get it off, cut it loose and fly and just do you. And that's when you're going to be yourself. That's when you're not going to care what other people think about you. And that's when actually you find your tribe and people are going to love you. Some people are going to hate you or not hate, but you know, some, not everyone's for everyone, 
But when you don't care about that anymore and you're more about you and what you want to do rather than what other people's views are, you just like, just keep going up and up and up and you just, yeah, live your life to the best life. You just have a great life um, and you deserve it. So I'm hoping that that's quite a nice way to finish this episode. I'm hoping you enjoy this episode because I've really struggled with my creativity because I've had some um, sad news with my dog who passed away and um, that was a very, really, really, really sad time in my life and um, I've just had a few blocks of creativity so and I've been trying to structure them so I've gone back to new structuring and I've really enjoyed doing this episode and I really, really like hope you got stuff out of it and if you did, please tell me because it just really helps me to know that I'm doing it right and that it's landing well and stuff Um, and you can share it and rate it on Apple and do all that funky stuff for me as a little creator and it it just goes a long way in helping me with what I'm doing so thank you so much for everything and uh, yeah I'll, uh, I'll see you soon take care bye